I think about what it would be like to patent language and not just a given pattern of letters or words either but the whole thing to owe and sell its uses and punish its misuses. And then it occurs to me, if we control its dissemination we have in essence the same thing. So we might say our final lawful aims geared toward this, backed by coercion, like a translucent plastic fishing line passed through the meat of terms, holding us one, but, always some first most acrimonious cell, etc. But to make shorter, blunter any tear, let the pecker squeeze off a round of but I am only trying to say, before gutting him. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, the tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. To actually write it out of my head, to focus on a word until it is read, she writes, but the scope's out of whack. Here, have to feel it forward, the head, an unsure path, faster, Faster. Give me your gentrificates of the Lower East Side, including all the well-heeled young Europeans who will take apartments without leases. Give me your landlords. Give me your cooperators. Give me the guys who sell the food and the computers to the public schools in District 1. Give me the IRS, FBI, CIA men who don't take Election Day off. Give me certain members of the school board and give me the district superintendent. Give me all the greedy members of both American and foreign capitalist religious sects. Give me the parents of the punk people. Give me the guy who puts those stickers in the Rice Krispies. Give me the doctor who thinks his time is more valuable than mine and my daughter's and the time of all the other non-doctors in this world. Give me the mayor, his mansion, and the president and his White House. Give me the cops who laugh and sneer at meetings where they demonstrate the new uses of mace and robots instead of the old murder against people who are being evicted. Give me the landlord's sleazy lawyers and the deal-making judges in housing court and give me the landlord's arsonist. Give me the known and unknown big important rich guys who now bank on our quaint neighborhood. Give me, forgive me, the writers who have already or want to write bestsellers in this country. Together we will go to restore Ellis Island, ravaged for years by wind, weather, and vandals. I was surprised and saddened when I heard that the Statue of Liberty was in such a serious state of disrepair, and I want to help. This is the most generous contribution that I can afford. Why take only three birds into the nest? How many in the bush? I saw hers hiding, was, felt. White Wings. The formidable Colonel George E. Waring Jr. was appointed street commissioner in 1895, and he ordered his entire brigade of street sweepers to wear all white uniforms and caps. Waring believed that the conspicuous white uniforms would keep his workers on the job instead of slacking off in the local saloon. On the good ship Lollipop, will I dream? Why was there so much commotion in 19th century New York City every May 1st? Well, May Day evokes images of flowers and maypoles in most of the Western world. But for 19th century New Yorkers, it was a horror of disorder and panic because May 1st was moving day or rent day when most everybody's leases expired and thousands of tenants were moving simultaneously. View the words and the characters behind the words to which they are wed and the trees behind the characters, the hands, manipulations. With all of their belongings clogging the streets and Cartman charging the Colonel George E. Waring Jr was appointed street commissioner in 1895. And he ordered his entire brigade clogging the streets and Cartman charging extortionate rates. Who were the white wings? Who were the white wings? The white wings. Who were the white who were the white wings? The white wings. Who were the white wings? The white wings. Enter fool from the hovel. End transmission.